Hi, I'm Jeremy, the Zoo Nerd, coming to you live from my backyard in Los Angeles, California. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're well, I hope you're happy, healthy, and having some fun. Today in our Critter Chat, we're going to talk about an animal I saw yesterday here in my backyard. Uh, that's where the video came from that I posted earlier today on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I was just eating my breakfast and out on my patio I noticed something moving around and turned on my camera to film uh, what, what, what I assume to be a juvenile opossum uh, kind of exploring around my backyard and kind of wandering around a bit. Uh, Opossums live throughout much of North America, um, throughout the United States, um, through Mexico, and through some of the countries of Central America, and just a wee bit into Canada in Ontario. Uh, they are primarily more common in the Eastern United States, and then again here on the Western coast, so in Washington, Oregon, and California. They like areas with a lot of rain, um, with good moisture, uh, areas that are drier. So further inland, even here, sorry, there's a cat that my dog's just scared. <laughs> uh, areas further inland here in, um, California don't have opossums so much, but I see them, uh, from time to time here in my neighborhood. They are America's only, uh, marsupial. We've talked about marsupials before. We even mentioned uh, opossums a bit in the Critter Chat on marsupials. Other marsupials, of course, uh, include many of the iconic animals from Australia, like kangaroos and koalas uh, and wombats, which have all been featured in Critter Chats. Um, but they're the only ones that live in North America. Now, there are some others that live in South America and they're related to the opossums that we see here. The Virginia opossum, that's the kind that lives in North America, um, is the biggest of the opossums. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of their other relatives in a bit. Opossums um, don't live in the middle of the country, kind of in the Rocky Mountains and the Northern Plains states. Um, and then of course not in the deserts of like Western Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. They're not really in those areas at all. Uh, they don't do well with high altitude. They don't do well with dry conditions. They are omnivores. Um, that means that they will eat just about anything that they can get. Uh, particularly they go after a lot of bugs and insects. Um, including things like cockroaches, um, ticks, uh, sometimes some spiders, uh, worms, um, snails. Uh, they'll go after some small rodents, things like mice or little rats. Um, they'll eat snakes. Uh, they are actually immune to the venom of rattlesnakes and copperheads. So uh, that's a pretty amazing superpower that these little guys have. Um, and they'll also eat plant material. Um, so they'll eat the leaves, they'll eat fruit, they'll eat nuts, um, they'll eat fungi, things like mushrooms, and then they'll eat a bunch of stuff that's decaying. So uh, decaying leaves, um, they'll eat dead animals that they find, they'll eat things that they find dead along the side of a road, uh, they'll go through garbage to look for table scraps or to eat uh, anything that might be dead in your trash. Um, one thing that is super helpful to humans is that they eat ticks. Ticks are little, um, I think they're technically an arachnid. I'd have to look that up. But they're a little bug that uh, can cause a lot of problems for humans, including a very serious disease called Lyme disease. And opossums love to eat ticks. Uh, they estimate that each opossum eats about 5,000 ticks in a year. So they are huge at helping prevent ticks in the United States. So they're very good to have around. In addition to the fact that they clean up all this dead and dying, decaying um, plant and animal matter that may be around as well. Opossums are primarily nocturnal. So they're usually active at night. Um, 
that will of course spill over into some day daytime activity um, particularly earlier in the morning or later in the day uh, just before it gets dark um, that's how I was able to film the little opossum that was on my patio the other morning um, it was still pretty early and it was definitely pretty cool and cloudy out um, my guess is that that little guy was probably trying to find a place um, to kind of hunker down and maybe sleep the day away and um, he was also pretty small he or she um, and probably uh, pretty recently on his own his or her own um, and trying to find a good place to sleep might be something kind of new to that individual uh, who had previously been relying on uh, his or her mom to help figure that out opossums um, being nocturnal primarily they have a really great sense of smell um, that helps them to find a lot of their food and also to find each other um, they do a lot of scent marking um, and then they also have really good hearing and that's important in the dark so that they can kind of avoid uh, predators and also to listen for things that they may want to eat uh, like bugs or mice that kind of thing they also are really good, good, good climbers. Um, on, their on their hands or feet, they have five digits, uh, including basically a thumb. Um, so that helps them to be able to climb up into trees really well. And then um, despite the look of it, their tail, they can actually hold on to things with their tail. They can hang from their tail, supporting most of their weight by just their tail for a short amount of time if need be. Um, so that's pretty impressive. Not many animals can do that. They also are really uh, good swimmers. Um, they will often come to the ground to move uh, from one place to another during the night or to look for food. Um, I've seen them uh, often in my neighborhood when I go out at night or if I'm driving at night. Um, I'll see them kind of uh, rummaging around in people's yards or or along the sidewalk looking for something to eat they are roughly the size of house cats so the one that you saw in the little video is definitely a small one a juvenile um, you can see a pair of shoes in that video to kind of compare it in size and uh, that little opossum was quite small uh, they get quite a bit bigger they can weigh or they can measure about two and a half feet in length that includes their tail their tail is probably between as an adult maybe uh, 10 to 12 inches in length um, they weigh between like 8 to 13 pounds so pretty similar in size to a house cat uh, they typically come in white and gray and black coloration uh, most of the opossums i've seen in my yard have been black in variety or have quite a bit of black on them. Whereas some of the others that I see further away from my house tend to be more the typical gray or white coloring that you see in a lot of the photos. They find each other through their scent. So they have scent glands. The male has a scent gland on his chest that he'll kind of rub around on different areas. Um, they also kind of mark their territory a little bit by their pee and their poop. And that's how a male will find a female who's ready to breed. Um, after breeding, she is pregnant or her gestation period, 13 days. Um, as a marsupial, they of course have uh, very underdeveloped babies. Uh, that is the key to how a marsupial functions. Um, and then those babies make their way into a pouch where they um, continue to develop. Um, with opossums, she may have give birth to up to 20, um, but inside the pouch there's only nipples for eight. So although she may give birth to more, some may never make it to the pouch, some may fall off along the wayside. Um, if they all get into the pouch, it's really rare that more than eight will survive. They'll kind of um, attach themselves to one of the nipples and kind of claim it as theirs. So usually only eight survive, although that's quite a few babies to be having. When the babies are very first born, they're about the size of a honeybee or a jelly bean. So pretty tiny. Um, they don't have open eyes. They don't really have 
functioning ears. They don't really have um, very well developed bodies. They don't have any hair. So they're pretty tiny pink, but they have good front arms. And that's kind of how they crawl to find their way to the, the pouch. They attach themselves to a nipple and then they stay in that pouch um, for between 50 and 70 days. And so roughly two months, uh, it's gonna vary a little bit depending on how many babies are in there, how much food the mom is eating and how uh, much milk is available for them to grow. So say she only has like six babies, um, they're gonna grow a little faster than a mom that has eight babies. Um, 50 to 70 days and then they kind of come out and they ride around on her back. This is something I really want to see. I have not seen in person yet, um, but someday I hope to be able to see a mom with babies riding around on her back. Uh, there's some video out there of pretty good sized babies, almost the size of the one I saw on my patio the other day, still riding around on their mom. Um, it looks uh, like a lot of uh, extra weight and responsibility to carry around, but it's also kind of cute. Um, as far as opossums can be cute. But uh, they'll kind of hang around with their mom for another um, like three months or so, about a hundred days. And then after that, they kind of start to wander off on their own. Um, the little one I filmed the other day, I assume was kind of in that range where recently leaving the side of its mom. In warmer climates, so California would uh, qualify for that or at least the area of California I live in um, and then uh, definitely like Florida uh, parts of Texas and then everywhere in Mexico except high elevations um, and any of the Central American countries the mom can have three litters of babies in a year um, so she can really have a lot of babies over a short amount of time in colder climates, uh, the mom usually only has one litter of babies, kind of during the spring and into the summer. Uh, that way the babies can kind of be a little bigger and get ready for um, life in a colder environment coming to them very soon with fall and winter. I would assume somewhere between warmer and colder climates, it's possible that the mom might have two litters. So I would assume that is also an option in places where uh, they have kind of a shorter winter. With opossums, um, they live a very short time. Their total life expectancy is estimated to be between two and four years. Uh, really short time for an animal that size. If you compare that to a house cat, house cats can live into their late teens typically. Um, so a two to four year window for an opossum is definitely very short. Um, I think that's also why they're so able to reproduce so quickly and have so many babies. Uh, they kind of got to get as much uh, regeneration of their population as possible. With opossums, they have a lot of predators out there that may try to eat them. Uh, things like owls, dogs, coyotes, foxes, raccoons, bobcats, and large snakes, um, especially for the little babies kind of wandering off on their own for the first little bit. Uh, I would assume even house cats would go after um, some of those babies that are on their own. Oh, they also become mature or able to reproduce on their own at about six or eight months. So um, if they're born in April, they're ready to breed by October. So pretty crazy uh, that they grow so quick. If they feel threatened, they can make a series of different noises, including growls, hisses. They'll pee in their poop, uh, which both stink quite a bit uh, to kind of ward off any threat or danger. And they can bite. Um, they have 50 teeth, which is more teeth than any other land-based mammal in North America. Um, and they know how to use their teeth very well to try to defend themselves. If none of those things are working, they can do something else. And you may have heard of this, uh, people call it playing possum. Um, it's a pretty unique uh, defense strategy, to be honest. They kind of become unconscious. So they'll kind of pass out, uh, their mouth hangs open, 
they start to get really foamy saliva around their big sharp teeth so it's kind of scary looking um, and then they have an, a special um, gland near their bum that produces a very stinky stinky smell that kind of smells like a dead or dying animal um, and then with the foamy saliva they just don't seem very appetizing so if they're being chased by a predator um, this may be something that could happen that they would fall into this but it could also happen if they feel threatened or uh, get hurt in another way so if they get hit by a car or if they fall out of a tree it could trigger this response and it's more like fainting than it is something that the opossum can control so it kind of is an involuntary response to their body and they're unconscious typically for a few minutes but it can last as long as like four hours um, and then they usually can bounce back from it and be up and running away so with people because opossums live in a lot of neighborhoods and around people sometimes people find an opossum that is in this state it stinks it's got foamy saliva by its uh, mouth um, it's laying there it's not moving it's not waking up give it some time if you give it a couple of hours um, if you can move it into a shady spot that may help it but leave it alone in general give it some time and then check on it later in the day if it's still there it may be dead or it may be injured if it is injured I would encourage you to call an animal uh, a wildlife rehab or a rehabilitation center in your area that could possibly take it and do something to help it out um, opossums because they eat dead things sometimes they're eating dead animals on the side of the road um, they kind of walk a little slow and a little weird um, so they sometimes get hit by cars quite often or they can get chased by any of those predators and get hurt pretty easy so uh, you may come across a uh, injured or um, distressed possum opossum uh, quite a bit now sometimes we call them possums that's an easier word to say opossum is an extra syllable and sometimes we're lazy with speech but there are animals called possums they don't live in the United States they live in Australia and New Guinea they are also marsupials they are typically smaller they are kind of fuzzier looking um, they have a cuter looking face so they don't have quite a sharp nose um, and uh, kind of gnarly teeth um, they have a furry tail so they look kind of cuter that way too um, and they kind of got confused for each other when people were first documenting what they were um, an explorer in the Americas first saw them in like the late 1600s and gave them the name opossum and then a similar Lee, a scientist in Australia who was exploring, saw the possums there kind of in the early uh, 1800s and thought, oh, th these kind of remind me of those animals that come from America because they have babies kind of in the same way. And so he called them opossums as well. And then that name got shortened to possum. So there are opossums and there are possums. They are in fact different types of animals they are all marsupials so they're all related um, possums tend to be Australia and the islands around Australia opossums are in North America and then they have some opossum cousins that live in South America as well um, most of the opossums that live in South America tend to look a little more rodent like I mean a uh, Virginia opossum actually kind of looks like a giant rat if you look at it uh, Physically, it has kind of a longer nose, it has a bare tail, kind of looks a little bit like a giant rat. Uh, the ones in South America are smaller and they kind of even more so look like a mouse or a rat kind of shape, um, but they have little pouches on their bellies. They, they do the whole marsupial thing. Um, my experience with uh, opossums, I, um, I grew up in Utah. We don't have opossums there. I then lived in Arizona. We don't have opossums there. Uh, so when I moved to California, this was the first, oh, 
I lived in Michigan briefly. I did see some opossums there. Uh, and then when I moved to California, uh, I definitely live in opossum territory again, and I see them quite often. In my zoo experience, uh, we also had a Virginia opossum at the LA Zoo during my time of training to be a zookeeper, and I got to help take care of her for a little bit. And then we got some of the South American varieties as well, um, and I got to help feed them and take care of them as I was training to become a zookeeper which was an interesting experience because they're just little tiny things, but they are um, very, very hungry carnivores who were very excited to eat and uh, kind of an interesting and odd animal to work with in that regard. With the Virginia opossum, they are not threatened at all. They are listed as least concern. In fact, their population is going up. They are one of the few animals that really have benefited from human expansion and people building things like cities and neighborhoods because we are a wasteful species and we tend to throw away a lot of things that are still edible to other animals. And so opossums have benefited from people's uh, garbage and also from people who leave things out like cat food or dog food for uh, cats or dogs that live outside and also um, just having a yard if you're growing fruits and vegetables that by its very fact uh, kind of creates additional food that's available in an outdoor environment so opossums have taken advantage of that and their population is actually on the increase i would encourage you if you see an opossum to leave it alone they're not causing harm they're not going to harm you other than if you try to touch it it will defend itself. So it may try to scratch you, it may try to bite you, especially if it has babies. It's going to be very protective of that. They don't cause any health threats or risk to you. They actually are doing a lot of good things by eating a lot of those kind of nastier bugs, things like cockroaches, definitely things like ticks, things that we don't really want around. So they are very beneficial to have around. They also help clean up any dead and decaying matter including uh, just leaves or uh, fruit or things that fall off trees, but also any dead animals that may be around, they'll help clean those up too. So if you see an opossum, I encourage you to watch it, see what it does. They're kind of fun to watch. Uh, I certainly enjoyed watching the one that was on my patio uh, yesterday morning and filming it. I'll be sharing more about opossums later today across my uh, Facebook page for Zoonerd. And as always, this Critter Chat will be uploaded to Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And you can also check out any of my information on my website at jeremythezoonerd.com. Until tomorrow, be happy, be healthy, be safe, have fun. See you tomorrow.